Hi, we're having another Tech Talk with Paul and Al. Say hi, Paul. Hi there. What are you working on? Today I have a Sansui 20,000 uh, fancy schmancy amplifier. Uh, this one came from a broker who was so pleased that it had been completely recapped. And I had to admit they did a very nice job. I've been through it and they use nice new capacitors and the soldering is such that you really can't tell that the caps have been changed. They did a nice, nice job, but one of the channels has been repaired. And let me see which one. It's this one. One channel's distorted and I get into it and I find two burned resistors on the driver board for the right channel. Uh huh. So I pull the boards out, don't find any bad transistors on it, and I pull the power amp module out and realize they've used God knows what brand transistors in it. So I thought, aha, they've got a bad rock in here. Pull them, these are good. Put it all back together. Went and got the schematic this morning, and I don't know where I put the schematic down at, but I have come to the conclusion that what happened is when they replaced these drivers, they didn't tighten the screws, which are the uh, collector connection to the circuit board. And they lost collector voltage to one of the drivers. And the current came through the bases of the outputs through a pair of resistors to the midpoint and through the speaker and smoked the resistors without damaging any semiconductors. So I'm about to reassemble it. Uh, I have soldered the screws in, made sure the washers were clean, torqued the nuts down, and went to this other board, made sure that its nuts were tight and they weren't. That may be all it was. So I'll know shortly whether this is going to run or not. But I have to admit they did a nice job with the recapping. You can't tell they had the whole dang thing apart and replaced every cap in it. There are little nuts about replacing resistors. I mean, they put new sandblock resistors in a number of places that I'm not sure I would have bothered with that. And a new protection relay. That's a nice touch. Uh, I've heard of people that make a living taking these and just completely recapping them. And people pay outrageous amounts of money for a recapped amplifier. Well, it's not a bad idea. It's an awful lot of work. But I was uh, surprised to see they recapped this one and did a very pretty job. I'll give them credit. They uh, even defluxed the boards when they were through. Usually they leave a ton of, you know, black on the board. Yeah. Did a nice job. But I'll know here shortly whether this is going to smoke again or not. I think it'll probably work. But it's a booger to tear down. Yeah, getting that, uh, that uh, oh. high, high output section. Getting this thing apart, there's a circuit board buried in here with the emitter resistors on it. I thought, well, the way it sounds, I've got an emitter resistor open, probably connected to a shorted output. Now, they're fine. Transistors check. Put it all back together. I've got to reassemble it. Everything plugs in, thank goodness. So we'll see in a little while whether this is going to work or not. But that's this evening's project is to reassemble this, put it on the amp meter, and flip the switch and hold my breath and hope that it doesn't smoke. Okay. But that's interesting. That's a big ass amplifier. So How many watts is it? Uh, 100 and some odd a channel. I think it's, I think it's 80. It's got three output transistors per half, a six output transistor channel. Hmm. It's usually in even numbers. This has six instead of uh, two or four. It's kind of odd. I figured it had a driver and two outputs, but no, that's, that's an output, all three of them. But a little hard to get to the emitter resistors, and the schematic shows a transistor in there that I don't see. And there's a transistor on this board that's in the bias uh, regulation circuit that they don't show on the schematic. So there's some variations. Oh, let me do a little piece on a very troublesome little booger. This will be my, my tip of the day. There's a little transistor. Now, excuse me, not transistor, a little diode. It's a little ball with it's usually reddish brown with a dot on it called a uh, D1212. It's a double diode. Two diodes in series. I um, don't remember if it's germanium or silicon. And it's used as a reference voltage diode for a constant voltage 
reference in an amplifier and as a stabilizer in preamps and it is notoriously bad. Uh, one person I looked at on the internet says anything you see with those diodes in it replace them because they are probably your problem. They don't make them anymore but you can take two ordinary uh, small signal diodes and put them in series. Works beautifully. They're looking for a one point, I think it's a 1.2 volt drop, so they're, they're, they're silicon diodes, signal grade. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have a problem, particularly if it's intermittent, look for these little buggers, and that may be the cause. All these other diodes check good. Those check good, but you can't ever tell. I had a power amp kept coming back with uh, one channel uh, crackling and running hot, and that's what it was. It took me three tries to find it. I kept resoldering the board. And trying to figure out what the heck was causing the problem and it turned out to be that diode. Wow. You get it hot resoldering it and it'd cure for a little while. And in two weeks later, it'd be, it'd be back in the shop. So you go on the internet, you learn a lot of stuff from other people who've made the same mistakes that you're about to make. So I'm going to pass that one along. Look out for those little diodes. D1212. D1212 diode problem. Yeah. Yeah. And is it just in this stereo? Or oh like? no, they're in all the Japanese stuff in the 70s. Okay. All, all the brands, they all used it. And they are notoriously uh, troublesome. But look what a nice job they did with the capacitors. All clean and neat. Oh, something else I'll point out. A lot of the manufacturers use this glue to glue larger components down. And this glue is still clear and doesn't, uh, hasn't darkened. But if this glue, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's yellowish. If these glue around these capacitors and resistors, if it turns dark or black or becomes crusty, it can be conductive and corrosive. Hmm. Anytime you've got older boards, particularly boards that get hot from power supply heat, that glue will turn dark and become conductive and corrosive. Uh, we've had it eat the circuit, the copper circuit traces off of boards at Sony. Hmm. years ago or cause uh, leakage between traces cause all kinds of problems anytime you find that get you some lacquer and a scraper lacquer thinner and, some, and a scraper and clean that out of there because with time it will get conductive and break down that's the one thing they didn't do was get that glue out of there and I'm religious about getting that glue out and they left that behind but other than that it's a nice job I was really surprised that uh, the soldering looks that good I mean, I don't solder that good anymore, but that really looks nice. These edge connectors are a pain too. They uh, can cause a lot of problems. We got we got two tips for today. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paul. You're welcome.